let's talk about chord progressions. Uh, first things first, we need to understand diatonic harmony. So diatonic harmony is just a fancy way of saying all the chords that fit within a certain key. So if we take the key of C major, uh, first we need to know the C major scale, which is easy because there's no sharps and flats. It's literally just C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. So to find the diatonic chords to C major, we need to build a chord off of each one of those notes in the scale using just the notes in the scale. So the way to build a chord is to literally just play every other note of the scale. So we can start with C, and then we skip the second note, D, and we play E, the third note. And then we skip the fourth note, F, and we play the fifth note, G. And that gives us a C major triad, right? C, E, G. If we want to make it a seventh chord, we just skip another note and play the seventh, which would be B, and that gives us a C major seventh chord. Now we can continue this moving through all the notes of the scale. So if we uh, go to the second note of the scale, which is D, we can do the same thing. We skip over E and play F. We skip over G and play A. And we skip over B and play C. And that gives us a D minor seventh chord, right? So if we continue this throughout uh, every note of the scale, we get this cycle of chords, right? C major 7, D minor 7, E minor 7, F major 7, G dominant 7, A minor 7, B minor 7 flat 5, and then back to C major 7 again. So these are all the chords that are diatonic to the key of C major. Now what's really cool about this is there's a million songs that use diatonic chord progressions. And when you're soloing over a song that has a diatonic chord progression, you can literally just play melodies out of the C major scale because all of these chords are built using those notes. So I'm going to play a really simple chord progression, uh, diatonic chord progression. It's just going to be C major, A minor, F major, and G major. And uh, I'll start out by playing the chords, and then I'll play a little solo, just uh, playing over the changes using the C major scale. So one of the things we can do to this simple chord progression to spice it up a little bit is add secondary dominant chords. So secondary dominant chords are when you take a chord that is usually not dominant and you make it a dominant chord. Now in the key of C major, we only have one naturally occurring dominant chord, and that's G7, the five chord, right? So a dominant five chord really wants to resolve back to the one chord really pulls you back to the one chord. So by adding secondary dominance, we can add these little five to one cadences throughout our chord progression to build tension and then resolve to different chords of the progression. So if we look at our chord progression of C, A minor, F, and G, um, we can add secondary dominance to get to the different chords in the progression. So our first chord change is C going to A minor. Um, so if we want to add a 5 to 1 to get to A minor, we have to figure out what the 5 chord of A minor is. So if we go up an A minor scale, 
one, two, three, four, five, we see that E7 is the five chord of A minor, right? So now our progression is C major, E7 to A minor. And you'll notice that, um, you know, E7 is not diatonic to the key of C because normally in C major, you would have an E minor seven chord. Um, but we've changed that to a dominant chord, so we've raised the third of that chord, right? But we've done that so that it functions now as a dominant five chord, leading us to the A minor. So if we continue on our progression, um, our next chord is F, right? So we can find the five chord of F by going up the F major scale. One, two, three, four, five, and we see that it's C, so C7. So again, we've uh, changed that to a dominant chord. Normally, we, we would play a C major 7, but we flatted that B down to a B flat to make that the dominant 5 chord of the chord we're moving to. So finally, uh, our last chord is G, and to find the 5 chord of that, we go up the G major scale, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we see that it's D. So now, uh, our pretty simple four chord progression has transformed into something a little bit more interesting. So I'll play that chord progression now. So now to solo over this type of progression, we have to be aware of the notes that change in these secondary dominant chords, right? E7 has a G sharp in it, which is not in the C major scale. Uh, C7 has a B flat in it, which is not in the C major scale. And D7 has an F sharp in it, which is outside of the C major scale. So it, this is where it really comes in handy to know your arpeggio shapes, know your chord tones to all these different chords so that you can uh, make the adjustments needed to navigate over these chords. So I'll play a quick solo now over this new chord progression um, and target some of these different notes that change over these secondary dominant chords to outline the sound of the chords. <laughs> about adding these secondary dominant chords to create these 5 to 1 cadences. Now let's go ahead and add a full 2 5 1 cadence. So a 2 5 1 is a common chord movement that you can use to transition from one part of a chord progression to another. It's basically like a little chord progression within a chord progression. So there's two types of 2 5 1s. There's a major 2 5 1 and a minor 2 5 1. Uh, a minor 2-5-1 has a 2 chord that is a minor 7 flat 5 chord. Uh, the 5 chord is a dominant chord, and then the 1 chord is a minor chord. So our first little 5 to 1 cadence in this progression is when we go from E7 to A minor. Okay, so in this case, we're going to use a 2-5-1 to get to A minor. So it's a 2-5-1 of the chord we're heading to. So now since A minor is a minor chord, we're going to use a minor 7 flat 5 chord as the 2 chord. So the 2 chord of A is B, right? So we'll play B minor 7 flat 5 to E7 to resolve to our A minor chord. Now if we continue on the progression, our next 5 to 1 is C7 going to F major. Now this is a major resolving to a major chord, so we're going to use a major 2-5-1. A major 2-5-1 has a minor 2 chord, and then a dominant 5 chord, and then a major 1 chord. So since we're going to F, we're going to play a 2-5-1 of F. So we're going to play G minor to C7 
to F major. So now I'll play through this chord progression with these added two five ones. Okay, now let's take this just one step further. We can further embellish these chords by adding some upper extensions. So far in this lesson, we've only been playing seventh chords, uh, dominant seventh, major seventh, and minor seventh chords. But we can start adding upper extensions uh, to these chords to give them even more flavor. And since we have a lot of these secondary dominant chords that are functioning as dominant five chords, they really lend themselves to adding some altered upper extensions like sharp fives, flat nines, things like that. So here I'm going to play through the chord progression one more time, but instead of just a regular E7, I'm going to play an E7 flat nine. And I can actually play a D diminished seventh voicing to get me that sound. And then over the C chord, instead of a regular C7, I'm going to play a C9 sharp 5 to get to the F. And then finally over the G chord, I'll play another uh, ninth chord with a sharp 5. So a G, G9 with a sharp 5 in it. So that sounds like this. Okay, so now to solo over this type of a progression, uh, we really need to be aware of the notes that make up the chords. Uh, we've got to know our arpeggios and our chord tones and be aware of these different extensions and uh, different notes that are happening in all these different chords. Now, obviously, uh, when you get into two five ones, there's a lot of different things you can play over those types of chord sequences, but really just knowing the chord tones and being able to weave together the different notes that make up the chords is really the most important first step and really a great way to just play melodically over any type of chord changes. So I'm going to play kind of a simple solo, try to stick uh, within one position and kind of navigate through these different chords. <laughs> Hopefully this lesson uh, gives you a little bit of insight into how you can take simple chord progressions and spice them up and add different uh, harmonic devices to get from one place to the next. Hopefully this will help you um, with writing your own chord progressions and reharmonizing songs and adding some different flavor to your playing. So as always, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time.